This 80,000 square foot facility in Tacoma, Washington has some unfinished space. So along this area here would all be prep of parts before they go into the enclosed paint booth. It's not finished yet, obviously. Tool Gage's facility was built in large part to support Boeing aircraft. Hundreds and hundreds of these would go into a single wing. But now, jets sit idle as airlines have canceled or deferred orders for hundreds of Boeing planes. The manufacturer delivered just 28 aircraft in the third quarter. This is the most significant, the most disruptive event for the entire industry. 9-11 was a blip on the radar screen compared to, to, to the effect of the pandemic. Thousands have been laid off across the travel industry. Boeing alone has shed more than 19,000 workers. With further federal aid uncertain, analysts expect more layoffs in aerospace. Everybody who is anywhere around aircraft manufacturing or maintenance, they're all feeling this. But trouble started well before the pandemic took hold. We in the aerospace industry have maybe been experiencing 2020 longer than 2020 has actually existed. So how much longer will 2020 last for the industry? And as Boeing's cuts send shockwaves down its supply chain, what are companies like Tool Gauge doing to keep the lights on? To understand the problems facing suppliers, it's important to look first at those facing Boeing. What they do has a significant impact on what we do. If they rate up on an aircraft, we're contractually obligated to support those rate ups. It's when the rates go down that things get difficult. So far this year, Boeing has cut production rates for some of its major aircraft. The manufacturer is now forecast to produce around 240 planes this year. In 2019, it produced 750. Before the pandemic, Boeing was already facing a crisis. Two fatal crashes led to the grounding of its 737 MAX in March 2019. We didn't really know how long that would last, right? We all hoped it would last a couple of months, and then it turned into six months, and ultimately it's been longer than that. The plane's prolonged grounding created a backlog of finished jets, prompting Boeing to halt production of the MAX in January. Some of the jet's biggest suppliers responded with cuts. And then we had COVID hit, and everybody stopped traveling on every type of airplane pretty much everywhere. Passenger volumes plummeted in March as governments put lockdowns and travel restrictions in place. At their lowest point in April, volumes were down 95% compared with a year earlier. Restrictions on international travel hurt demand for Boeing's wide-body planes, which are larger than the MAX, and they started piling up too. So suddenly, nothing was safe for the supply chain. No programs were safe because of, of, of the pandemic and its effect on the travel industry as a whole. Boeing said it's working with suppliers on issues related to financial health. In addition, the company said, we are using this downturn to refocus our energy on safety, quality, and a stable production system for the future, both within Boeing and our extended supply chain. That includes Tool Gauge. The company does most of its work for Boeing's wide-body aircraft. Whenever you hear that noise, you know they're making something. General Manager Jim Lee estimates at least 75% of his business is direct to Boeing or its Tier 1 suppliers. This is a part that ends up going on to a uh, 777X engine. Tool Gauge has been supplying Boeing aircraft for more than 40 years. We've never lost a contract with Boeing, so we've always been able to renew the contract and, and grow the statement of work. So we've actually just built the business up year over year over year. Helping Tool Gauge was Boeing's high production rates, particularly on the wide-body 787. Prior to 2020, the aerospace industry faced a production surge. And it was being labeled by analysts as this super cycle. At the start of the year, Boeing was producing 14 787s and five 777s per month. It also estimated the MAX would return to service midway through the year. Tool Gauge said those rates put the company on track to double its revenue over a three-year period. So Tool Gauge built a new factory, and not just to add space, but also to add new equipment and technologies. That was all before the coronavirus took hold in the U.S. We were all wondering what, what the end of the super cycle was going to be, um, and sometimes joking about it, of what could it take. None of us thought it would take a global pandemic. Tool Gauge was forced to shut down, and in Washington state, we were granted an essential status so that we could return to work to support Boeing. But it wasn't long after that that, you know, the airlines not seeing traffic and then starting to defer orders and, 
and then it just got worse month over month over month. Soon after, Boeing cut production rates. It plans to make six 787s and two 777s a month next year. Meanwhile, a planned production increase for the MAX, which restarted limited production in May, was delayed until 2022. Then we jumped into um, the painful process of determining which of the people do we keep. It wasn't who do we let go, it was like who do we keep and how do we keep this business viable based on the rate that we see now. In June, Toolgate delayed off staff, going from nearly 190 employees to about 80. It was a, a very difficult and challenging situation, I think, for everybody. Teresita Quiroz has been working for Tool Gauge for more than two years. Since the layoffs, she said many in the company have assumed multiple roles. Before, I used to basically focus on what is scheduling and the planning of uh, production. So now I help out directly with customer service and the other departments that is assembly and machining. There used to be people to do that before. Tool Gauge also cut its shifts due to the rate decrease, going from three eight-hour shifts per day to one 10-hour one. The business is now closed on Fridays. But there is reason for optimism. Kiroz and Lee both say it appears the worst is behind them. We're starting to ramp up again uh, slowly, and we're not hiring new people, but we're rehiring the people that got laid off. One reason for that is the pending return to service of the MAX. The other, a return to travel especially when a coronavirus vaccine likely becomes available. For those suppliers who are able to be creative enough and flexible enough and hold on, if they can make it through the next six months to two years, they will be in a strong position to respond to an uptick, the eventual uptick in the market that is going to happen. The thing that is a little bit unknown is, you know, what does that mean to those airplanes that are currently grounded? How do they return to service? When does that trigger replacement aircraft orders? And then, of course, how does that affect new aircraft production? Lee estimates it will be another year and a half to two years before the industry gets back to pre-COVID production rates. Until then, he says the company might defer some investments it planned to make in the new facility. It will also seek out complementary work outside of commercial aerospace. The thing that's going to be missing is if you looked at our curve for growth, it looked something like this, right? It was a pretty steep climb on our revenue growth, and you know we had the factory to support it. But if you look at it now, it goes it's pretty flat for the next two years, and then it starts to go back up where, where we'd hope. Some analysts say that's too optimistic. I don't anticipate a return to production rate until 2024, and we don't really in my opinion, recover from this pandemic and from the impact on air travel, probably not until the end of this decade. Boeing said, as we stand today, we project it will take about three years for travel to return to 2019 levels. And it will be a few years beyond that for the industry to return to long-term trend growth. In its recent annual market forecast, Boeing said the coronavirus pandemic will reduce global jetliner demand by around 2,000 planes over the next decade. Ultimately, Boeing and its suppliers are at the whim of a virus without an end date. With fears of a second wave in the U.S. and drug makers getting closer to a vaccine, the future is unclear. The game that we're playing in aerospace is not a short game. It's a long game and the investments take a little bit longer to, to pay off, but, um, but I think we're, we're going to be fine.